Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to PharmaLite's YouTube channel. This is the drug of the day series where today we will be discussing briefly about the drug Digitalis. So let's get started. Digitalis belongs to the class of cardiac glycosides, which are the glycosidic drugs that have cardiac amyotrophic properties. It is also known as foxglove. The main source is Digitalis lanata and its main use is in CHF. CHF is congestive heart failure. So CHF is a condition where the heart muscles, they fail to pump blood effectively to all the organs of our body. So basically CHF is a condition that affects the pumping power of our heart muscles. Now this is the structure of digoxin. And as you can see, there's a steroid ring present, an unsaturated lactone ring present, three digitoxo sugars and two hydroxy groups are present. So all the cardiac glycosides, they mainly differ in their pharmacokinetic properties, which is influenced by the lipophilic character. And the lipophilic characters of each glycoside depends upon the number of these hydroxy groups present. So in general, if the cardiac glycoside has more lipophilic character, it will be absorbed faster and will also exhibit longer duration of action because of slow urinary excretion. Now let's look at the mechanism of action by which Digitalis acts. So digitalis increases the force of it increases the force of cardiac contraction by selectively binding to the extracellular phase of the sodium potassium ATPase pump and it will inhibit it. So this is very important. It binds to sodium potassium ATPase pump and it will selectively inhibit this pump. And inhibition of this cation pump will result in accumulation of sodium intracellularly, that is inside this cell. So when there will be intracellular accumulation of sodium, this will indirectly result into accumulation of calcium intracellularly via the sodium calcium exchange system. So initially there will be accumulation of sodium, which will lead to accumulation of calcium intracellularly, and this will cause muscle contraction. Also at very high doses, there will be depletion of intracellular potassium, which will lead to hypokalemia. And this hypokalemia will precipitate digitalis toxicity. So that's why the therapeutic index of digitalis is very low because both the therapeutic effect and toxic effect of digitalis depends upon the concentration of calcium and potassium ions intracellularly. Now let's look at the pharmacological action. So first is force of contraction. Digitalis causes a dose dependent increase in the force of contraction of the heart and thus a positive inotropic a positive inotropic action is pr produced. Now what is positive inotropic? Inotropic means which is related to contractility and positive inotropic means increase in contractility. So digitalis increases the contractility of the heart muscle and that's why it causes a dose dependent increase in the force of contraction. Next is its effect on the heart rate. So it decreases the heart rate and produces bradycardia. That's why it has a negative chronotropic action. Now chronotropic is related to heart rate and negative chronotropic means decrease in heart rate. So digitalis has a negative chronotropic action. That is, it decreases the heart rate and produces bradycardia. And we know that bradycardia and tachycardia are the two forms of irregular heart rates. Bradycardia is slower than normal heart rate and tachycardia is faster than normal heart rate. So this is very important. Digitalis has a positive inotropic action and a negative chronotropic action. Next is its effect on the action potential. So digitalis decreases the RMP, that is resting membrane potential. Initial, normally the resting membrane potential is around minus 90 millivolts, inside minus 90 millivolts. And digitalis decreases it to around minus 70 millivolts. So the RMP is progressively decreased to a less negative value with increasing dose. So that's why excitability is enhanced even at low doses. Then the rate of phase zero depolarization is reduced. The slope of phase four depolarization is increased and the action potential duration is also reduced. Next is blood pressure. So digitalis increases the systolic blood pressure and it decreases the diastolic blood pressure in CHF patients and the pulse pressure increases. Next is its effect on ERP, which is effective refractory period. So in the atrium, 
the erp is decreased by vagal action and increased by the direct action so overall the vagal action predominates so in the atrium the erp is decreased because of vagal action in the av node and bundle of his it is increased by direct action of vago of vagus and adrenergic action and finally in the ventricles erp is decreased because of direct action next is its effect on ecg which is very important so it has multiple effects here so in the ecg it produces decreased amplitude or inversion of the t wave so as you can see here in the normal ecg this is the t wave and this is the ecg after taking digitalis where there is inversion of the t wave then the pr interval increases so this is the pr interval and this pr interval increases here then there will be shortening of qt interval this is the qt interval so this qt interval shortens and lastly it causes depression of the st segment so this is the st segment and as you can see here the st segment depresses next is the adverse effect so digitalis toxicity is very high and the margin of safety is very low that's why therapeutic drug monitoring of digitalis is required and it shows both extra cardiac symptoms and cardiac symptoms basically extra cardiac symptoms precedes the cardiac symptoms so in cardiac symptoms we get almost every type of arrhythmias partial to complete av block severe bradycardia extra systoles and af which is atrial fibrillation and afl that is atrial flutter and in extra cardiac symptoms we have anorexia nausea vomiting abdominal pain even fatigue headache mental confusion all these extra cardiac symptoms now treatment for this adverse effect this is very important so for tachyarrhythmias we give kcl infusion now firstly we need to know what is tachyarrhythmia so we know arrhythmia is irregular heartbeat and tachy means faster than normal heartbeat so tachyarrhythmia is extremely abnormally fast heartbeat and for that uh, we give kcl infusion so uh, when chronic use of digitalis occurs and diuretics together so when diuretics and digitalis is given together then there will be extreme hypokalemia and for that that causes tachyarrhythmia so for treatment of that we give kcl infusion either iv or orally in milder cases so high extracellular potassium will decrease the binding of the glycoside to the sodium potassium atp is found and then the action of digitalis will be antagonized next is for ventricular arrhythmias the main drug of choice is lidocaine that is repeated as required then for supraventricular arrhythmias propranolol iv or orally depending upon the urgency is the main drug of choice then for av block and bradycardia we give atropine av block is block or interruption of the electrical conduction from the atrium to the ventricle because of conduction abnormalities and for that atropine is the main drug of choice and lastly we have one digoxin antibody also that is digibine as you can see here it is digoxin immune fab ovine that is digi fab so this digoxin antibody that is digibine uh, it is made from the fab fragment and it is non immunogenic it is given by iv infusion and it is also very helpful in treating the toxicity of digitalis now before moving on to the next slide make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel and also drop a text on the number that is given here on the next slide to get added to our whatsapp group where we post daily five mcqs regarding gpat and nipo then now let's look at the contraindications so first is hypokalemia so we know that hypokalemia will enhance digitalis toxicity so if digitalis and diuretics are given together a severe hypokalemia occurs because of loss of potassium ions and this will enhance the digitalis toxicity then elderly patients renal and severe hepatic disease patients even they are more susceptible to digoxin toxicity then myocardial ischemia patients in them severe arrhythmia occurs so myocardial ischemia is a condition where the blood flow to a heart is reduced and it prevents the heart muscles from receiving enough oxygen so if a patient of myocardial ischemia receives digitalis in them severe arrhythmia will occur 
नेक्स्ट इज थाइरोटॉक्सिकोसिस थाइरोटॉक्सिकोसिस मीन्स थाइरो मीन्स थाइरॉयड हॉर्मोन एंड टॉक्सिकोसिस मीन्स टॉक्सिक लेवल्स सो थाइरोटॉक्सिकोसिस इज बेसिकली एक्सेस ऑफ थाइरॉयड हॉर्मोन इन आर बॉडी सो इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ थाइरोटॉक्सिकोसिस डिजिटालिस विल कॉज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एरथमियास नेक्स्ट इज मिक्सोडेमा मिक्सोडेमा इज सीवियर हाइपोथाइरॉयडिज्म एंड इन दैम द बिगॉक्सिन विल एलिमिनेट वेरी स्लोली एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट क्यूमुलेटिव टॉक्सिसिटी कैन अकॉम then in patients of ventricular tachycardias it can cause it can precipitate ventricular fibrillation then in patients of partial av block digitalis will convert it to complete av block and finally in the patients of wolf parkinson white syndrome it will decrease the effective refractory period now wpw syndrome or wolf parkinson white syndrome it is a very rare condition in which extra electrical pathway develops between our hearts upper and lower chamber and it causes very rapid heart beat so that is wpw syndrome which is very rare but in patients of wpw syndrome digitalis will decrease the effective refractory period next now look at some now let's look at some drug drug interaction caused by digitalis so with diuretics it will cause hypokalemia we know this with calcium there will be syner synergesis with digitalis and it will precipitate toxicity with adrenergic drugs and succinylcholine it will induce arrhythmias succinylcholine is a depolarizing muscle skeletal muscle relaxant with quinidine which is an anti arrhythmic drug quinidine will reduce the binding of digitalis with the protein and because of that the plasma drug concentration will increase and this will show toxicity now this is the question that came in gpat 2012 that is which of the following drug has positive inotropic action and negative chronotropic action so positive inotropic and negative chronotropic action and these were the four options dopamine epinephrine digoxin and isoprenaline so this is very simple we just now dis discussed about this so the answer is digoxin so the rest of the option dopamine epinephrine and isoprenaline they show positive inotropic and positive chronotropic effect positive inotropic and positive chronotropic effect that is they will increase both the contraction as well as the heart rate but digoxin is the only drug here that shows positive inotropic and negative chronotropic effect so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative and if you did make sure to like it and share it share it with all of your friends who are preparing for gpat and nipo also don't forget to subscribe to our channel pharma elite youtube channel where we upload such informative videos every day also hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update thank you